This is a tutorial on how to play on the guitar the song Green Green Grass of Home by Tom Jones. In this content, you will learn the chords and the appropriate strumming pattern. The song is written in key of G sharp and there are seven chords. The chords are G sharp, G sharp 7, C sharp, D sharp, D sharp 7, C minor, and A sharp minor. And all these chords are difficult chords, especially for beginners. But by lowering the pitch of each of these chords by a half step, we get to a set of simple chords. And these are G, G7, C, D, D7, B minor, and A minor. These are all simple and easy chords except for B minor, which you will only play once near the end of the song. Since this set of easy and simple chords are lower than the actual chords by a half step, playing these chords for the song would sound lower than the record. But we can still use these simple easy chords and to be able to play along with the song at the record pitch or key. All we have to do is to use and place a capo at first fret. But if you don't have a capo, I would still suggest that you use these easy chords to play the song. It will not match the record pitch, but it will still sound the same song. Now I will discuss to you the fingerings of each of these easy and simple chords with the capo at first fret. Before I discuss with you the fingerings for each of those chords with the capo at first fret, let me discuss with you a bit about the fretboard. The guitar has six strings and the strings are numbered. This is number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And these spaces where we put our fingers on are called frets. So this is 1st fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, and so on. And the left hand fingers have notation. I mean, for the left hand fingers, this is our index finger, which is numbered 1, middle finger, number 2, um, ring finger, number 3, and the pinky, number numbered 4. Now for the 1st chord, with a capo at 1st fret, the chord name is G. Now, Actually, G, this is G, but the actual chord is G sharp, and G sharp is a bar chord, which is this one, and this is not easy for beginners, so I transpose down the chords by a half step, so from G sharp, we go down to G, but G sounds lower, and it's this one, but for us to still be able to use uh, easy chords like G and still be able to play the song at the recorded pitch we only have to raise the sound by placing a capo at first fret now the capo here becomes the knot or the capo takes the position of the knot so this will be the position for this shape G the shape is G but actually the sound is G sharp as you can hear and this is G sharp the sound is pretty much the same but this is harder to do but using transposition and capo we use a simple chord shape G now we can play the song with easy chords and again the shape is G but the sound is G sharp so for simplicity, I'll just mention the name of the chord. So the first chord is G. And for this chord, you have your number two finger on the sixth string at third fret. Now this becomes the third fret because the position of the capo is right at first fret. And now we have to refer the position of the frets in relation to the position of the capo. With the capo at first fret, now this fret becomes the first fret. This is the second and this is the third. And for this chord shape G, the middle finger would, or number two finger would be at the third fret on the sixth string. 
on the index finger or number one finger on the fifth string at second fret and uh, ring finger which is the number three finger on the first string at third fret and the other strings are left open so this is the G for this song with the capot first fret and again the sound is G sharp the next chord is C and for this chord you have your ring finger uh, or number three finger on the fifth string at third fret number two finger on the fourth string at second fret and number one finger on the second string at first fret the sixth string is dead and should not be played the other strings are left open so you strum from the fifth string down and that's the sound of c sharp but the shape is c it becomes c sharp because we have a capo at first fret so the simple shape the chord c when move to the next fret with the capo at first fret that becomes c sharp because we're raising the sound by a half step the next chord is d and for this chord you have your index finger on the third string at second fret number two finger on the first string at second fret and number three finger on the second string at third fret but for this chord, you have two dead strings. The number five and number six are not to be played. So you strum only four strings from fourth string down. This is D. The other chord is G7. And for G7, you have your number one finger on the first string at first fret, number two finger on the fifth string, at second fret and number three finger on the sixth string at third fret the other strings are left open so basically those are the chords that are that are used mostly for this song but on the last line of the song more chords were added and these are d7 b minor and a minor for d7 you have your index finger on the second string at first fret your middle or number two finger on the third string at second fret number three finger on the first string at second fret and there are two dead strings the number five and number six are not to be played so you strum from the fourth string down this is d7 and the next chord is b minor which is the only bar chord in this set of chords and for b minor you have your in middle you have your index finger or number one finger flat or positioned across all six strings at second fret your number two finger on the second string at third fret your number three finger on the fourth string at fourth fret and your pinky on the number three string at fourth fret but for this chord number six string is dead and should not be played so for b minor you strum from the fifth string down <laughs> And the last chord is A minor. For A minor, you have your number one finger on the second string at first fret, number two finger on the fourth string at second fret, number three finger on the third string at second fret. The number six string is dead, so you strum from fifth string down. So this is A minor. Now let's discuss the transition between chords. The first chord is G, the next chord is C. You can actually play G with this one, two, three fingers and move to C this way. But I would suggest that you play G with two, three, four fingers, this one, as it's easier to transition from this set of fingers of G to C by just moving these two fingers one string down and then position your index finger on the second string. So from this to this, and then it goes back to G. So all you have to do is from C back to G, move these two fingers up, one string up, take out the index finger, and then position the ring finger back to first string. So you have the sequence between G, C, G, G, C, G. 
And then, it's even easier going to the next chord from G to G7. All you have to do is position your index finger on the first string and take out the pinky. So it's a lot easier if you use three fingers to play G. It's easier to move from G to C. And it's even easier to move from G to G7. Imagine if you use this one, two, three fingers for G. You'll have to break the shape to see, and there's a lot of movements compared to this. And also, the, the case is the same between G and G7. If you play G with these three fingers, going to G7, you will really have to break the shape, and there's a lot of movement. But if you play G with these three fingers, to G7 is just switching your pinky with the index finger. And then there's a transition from G7 to C. And it's also easy as all you have to do is bring these two fingers one string down and then bring this finger one string up. Now that's C. So from G7 to C. And then there's a transition from G to D or G with a set of fingers to D. Now if you now now for G to D sequence it's up to you if you want to use 1 2 3 4 G going to D or 2 3 4 for G to D. It's up to you, whichever is more convenient for you. But for other chords like from G to C, it's a lot easier if you play G with two, three, four fingers. And also from G to G7. So this is the transition between chords for, for those chords that are used a lot in this song. And then on the last line of the song, on the last lyric line, we have this sequence between D and D7. So that's how you would transition. You really, there's no uh, common finger. You really have to break the shape. Break this to form the next shape for D7. And then from D7 to C, you can keep your index finger. All you have to do is move your middle finger or number two finger one string up and then your ring finger two fifth string. Now this is C. So from D7 to C. And then from C to B minor, this one. So no common fingers. From this shape, C you really have to break it to form the next shape for B minor. And then there's a sequence from B minor to A minor. So you can transition from B minor to E minor this way. Or if you notice, this shape is similar to the shape of this. Uh, three fingers for B minor. So you can actually take advantage of this shape. All you have to do is from B minor to A minor is keep this formation of these three fingers and move it back by two frets down. There. So I believe it's easier to transition from B minor to A minor by just sliding these three fingers down by two frets compared to this to this. And there's a lot of finger movements whereas from here all you have to do is just slide this two frets down. And then from this shape, A minor to G. So 
So that's how I would transition between chords for this song. And for the strumming pattern, I suggest this rhythmic pattern. As you can see, there is a downstroke right at count one, an upstroke right at count two, downstroke between counts two and three, an upstroke between counts three and four, a downstroke right at count four, and an upstroke between counts four and the next measure at count one. So the suggested rhythmic pattern is a sequence of six strokes. It's a combination of down and up strokes. And also in terms of duration of each of those strokes, it's a combination of quarter note and eight note strums. The stroke at count one is actually a quarter note. The up stroke at count two is an eight note. The downstroke between counts 2 and 3 is another quarter note. And the upstroke between counts 3 and 4 is an 8 note. And the downstroke right at count 4 is another 8 note. And the uh, upstroke between counts 4 and to the next measure at count 1 is another 8 note. So the suggested strumming pattern is a series of downstroke and upstrokes. It's down up down up down up but in terms of duration it is a series of quarter note eight note quarter note eight note eight note and eight note for this rhythmic pattern or strumming pattern i would suggest for eight note counting so you have to count this way one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and so on practice eight note counting first do it for several measures or bars do a good number of repetition make sure that your counting is steady and even and when you can count steady and even try to apply the sequence of strokes as shown here the strumming pattern is good for one measure or bar. So all you have to do is do eight note counting for each measure or bar. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. We have a downstroke at count one. One and two and three and four and... So that's how it sounds like at that slower tempo to be able to apply the rhythm smoothly you learn it first at a slower tempo and get yourself comfortable doing it when you can do the pattern over and over without messing up the sequence of strokes or without making mistakes that's when you can speed up the counting or the tempo as a demonstration of applying the strokes of the pattern Let's apply a slower tempo first. One and two and three and four and so with a pattern. One and two and three and four and 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 when you get comfortable doing that for several measures, try to do the pattern at a faster tempo. Like at this tempo, one and two and three and four and which I believe is the recorded tempo of this song. One and two and For the performance video or my demonstration of playing the song, click this card. I hope you find this tutorial helpful in learning how to play the song on your guitar. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching this content and please do subscribe. Don't forget to like and share this content to others so that others would also benefit from this lesson.
At the end of this content are three end screens, one for the playlist of chords and lyrics for some songs, and the other one is a playlist on ukulele lessons. Again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Subscribe to be notified automatically for new uploads. Thank you for watching.